Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show where we sit down with local elected leaders from all across Canada. Over the course of this episode, we'll be learning about who our guest is, what drives them, and how they are working to make their community a better place for everyone who lives there. Now, today we are honored to welcome onto the show from the town of Okotoks, Alberta, Councillor Oliver Hallmark. Oliver, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So, Oliver, if you listened to the show before, and I've had your council colleagues on before, so uh, it, it's no exception. You're no exception to the first question out of the gate, and that is, where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? Well, I think it probably comes from my parents, or it started there in one way or another. They've never been really into the political side, but they were always about community volunteering. So we, uh, so as kids, we were encouraged to volunteer. My mom volunteered with our school. My, my uh, dad volunteered with uh, planning a soapbox derby for town. And so when I moved to Okotoks, um, I... Uh, it was about 2007 and I was about in my early 30s and so to get to know people and I'm learning uh, from a lot of people that this is a common practice. I joined a, a lot of organizations to try and get to know people so that's why I started to volunteer and then um, I think that I just took it to the next level when I decided to run for council and I uh, did it probably, oh sorry go ahead. Had you always wanted to be a politician or was this something that was not even in the radar of young Oliver growing up? Uh, no, I wouldn't have even followed, I didn't follow politics at all until getting involved with volunteering. And I saw how, um, how political influence uh, affected the volunteer sector. So I, uh, I learned a little bit more through, by volunteering, I learned uh, that I would want to get involved on the other side of it. For that so, yeah. so in 2021 you decide to put your name forward for town council um i i want to go back to that first election because you, you don't just randomly wake up one day and say i'm going to be the town councillor for the, my community was there an issue going on in the community you, you talk about the political influence that uh there had on some organizations and some uh volunteer groups in your community what was the main catalyst to finally say, okay, Oliver, now is the time? Or were there people approaching you and saying, you know what, we think you'd make a good person on council because you'd be able to represent us? Uh, yeah, this is great because I actually did not decide to run in 2021. I decided to run in 2017. And while I was going through the kind of the, the process or trying to learn on how to put my name forward in 2017, I realized I hadn't, I didn't have enough boxes checked to really understand the role as a politician. So I took a step back and that's when I kind of changed. Because before that I, I, I volunteered for organizations that were uh, community run, but I wanted to, I, I decided to join, um, I decided to join, start volunteering with some municipal, like F, uh, uh, organizations like FCSS. So I actually took a step back or took a breath in 2017 and then decided, and there was no real one issue. I just thought that I, the town could benefit with my voice at the table. And I thought it would be fun. Honestly, I, I think that's a big part of why I ran was because I thought, oh, this would be something fun for me to do. So what were the check boxes you talk about? It's, I've never heard of it explained that way before. So was there a certain, like, did you have like a list of 10 things you think you needed to be a counselor and you only checked off like four of them out of the 10 or eight of them out of the 10? And did you, in 2021, were all the boxes checked that you believe would have made you a better counselor? Well, I, I realized like, as I was trying to understand what, how was I going to build a platform if I was going to have, like, what would, what did it look like to run for uh, municipal office? And I realized I didn't have a very good understanding of what a counselor did. I, and again, I thought, oh, this is something I want to be a, what I, I would consider a glorified, I actually still think a counselor is a glorified volunteer. So I think if you look at the pay, it's, it's, I think this too still, but uh, I think, um, I, I didn't, I needed to learn. So that's why I joined municipal committees or applied to be on municipal committees because it really got, and I then started watching uh, some council meetings. And even, even once getting elected, which I think we're gonna get into right away here, but I still realized once I got elected, I still even checking those boxes, 
I didn't really have a really great understanding of what a counselor did until I was sitting in the seat. Does that answer your question? It does. It answers it quite well. So let's talk about that moment you get elected here for a second. So October 21st, 2021, the blue check mark goes beside your name and you declare, I think it was October 18th or October 21st. And this is how bad my brain is these days. Um, you get declared in October of 2021. I should have just said it that way, that you are the counselor elect for the town of Okotoks. What goes through your head at that moment? Because I can imagine there, there's a bit of a shock, but happy shock. Yeah, there's, there was um, 25 people running for six seats. Um, there was only one incumbent running for council. So we knew we were going to have a mostly new council. Uh, mayor Thorne uh, also was running for mayor. So we, I mean, we'd have two incumbents if they had both won their seats, I guess, or if she had won mayor, she'd be, anyways, you know what I mean. They, um, so what was I thinking? I instantly, because the, per so the person that wrote me, because I wasn't at, it was still COVID. I'm sure you've heard this from everybody you've interviewed. It was COVID. We were encouraged to have a small gathering. I had a very small gathering with nobody from really Okotoks except for two friends. And then my, it was my family from Kimberly came out to stay at my place that night. And, um, and Wait, the you're from called, Kimberly, Saskatchewan? Uh, that's Kindersley, Saskatchewan. Oh. I'm from... I'm from Kimberley, British Columbia, the Bavarian oh, city of the Rockies. Okay, hey, sorry, I, I must have—I misheard you. I was like, "Wait, you're from Saskatchewan, but you're from British Columbia." Okay, I apologize. Yeah, it's, <laughs> no, it's good. And so my family was with me, and um, and I got a call from somebody that was at the counting station that also had ran for council. And again, running for council against or alongside 25 people there were some great friendships made during the process. Like I think a lot of the people running had like-minded, uh, they all had this, the same goals for our municipality. So we there is a great friendship. And the person that wrote me to congratulate me and took a picture of the sheet that they pasted up in front of everybody, it was bittersweet because I really, really like this guy and he did not make the cut, but I did. And it was, so that night, I, I have this instant guilt that I, I felt like I, I should, probably shouldn't have won because he was so close to making it. So I, I was a bit torn. I had a little bit of guilt. Uh, the CAO called me, and again, it goes to show how little I knew it was going, how much time it was going to take. Uh, the CAO called me shortly after they announced and says, congratulations, we'll see you on Thursday. I'm like, oh, no, but the council meeting's not scheduled till next Monday or whatever. She's like, oh, no, we're going to we're going to uh, start. And that's when I saw the schedule and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a lot more this time intensive than I originally thought. But no, it was great. I was, I, I went to bed happy. I woke up at three in the morning to take down all the lawn signs uh, myself. And uh, did you have to pinch yourself? Did you have to pinch yourself? Because I can imagine you, you seem like a humble guy. It seems like you, you don't do things for fame and glory that people actually put their trust in you to say, we believe Oliver will do good and have the best interest of the town at heart when he makes the day to day decisions as a counselor has to. Was it a bit humbling for you to get the recognition that the people of Okotoks have had put their trust in you? Oh yeah, like, yeah, because I definitely felt guilt. Like I have to tell you, like this is big, I felt guilt. And even when the mayor called me the next day, I was, uh, uh, the first thing I said, I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, I think they should probably recount or something. Like I, she's like, no, no, you won. And I'm like, so like, it's just, I mean, counselor elect. So I don't know if that really means that I got elected. So the whole process was, uh, yeah, it was humbling. Cause I, and I took down my signs cause I'm like, oh, oh my God, they're gonna figure out I'm a fraud before day one. Or there, I, there is always this, this thought that they're going to figure me out that I, I don't belong here. So, uh, but now I, I think I love it. I, I love it. It's we're what 18 months in or so, but it's, it's, I, 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 I'm glad I won and I, I, I have a great time. I appreciate so it now. We're coming up to almost two years in office for you since that uh, election day in 2021. We're, this this airs at the end of June. So we're coming up to the summer when most people were in campaign seasons, quote unquote campaign season. What's been the biggest educational experience for yourself in this new role? Because I can imagine you, you kind of openly talked about it already, but what you expected and what you got are two different things. 
you, you kind of were thrown in head first uh, the Thursday after election day, not the first council meeting after election. So for you, what was the biggest learning curve for being behind the table and making the decisions that you would have to ultimately make that will dictate people's livelihoods? Uh, policy and bylaw. I probably had no idea what either of those things were before I ran for council. I, I kind of had a good idea of what a counselor did, I'd say, but not enough to know that policy and bylaw, like you have to be creative on how you, how you move this forward. And you're only one of seven. And, uh, and, and government moves very, very, very slow. And I am in my trade during the day as a hairstylist and I am quick, 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 like let's like get things done. So I've had to learn to slow down and breathe a bit, so. Earlier this month, as of recording this, on this day we were recording this, uh, there was a vandalism of a pride crosswalk in the town of Okotoks. How much does that hurt someone of your stature and your, uh, sort of influence in your community when you see people vandalizing uh, sort of representation of the LGBTQ community. And as a member of the LGBTQ community, 2S LGBTQI plus community, sorry, I want to make sure I get that right. Do you feel like you need to speak out more prominently when things like this happen in your community compared to say other attacks that councils may have because i'm assuming and i've spoken to many counselors from across canada you get attacked for the decisions you make you get attacked for the decisions that you uh vote on but when things like this happen in your community do you feel like you need to speak out more passionately when uh the community is attacked this is a great question and it's going to be, and I apologize because it's going to be quite a lengthy answer. So good, um, good, because uh, this is airing in the, on June 30th, it's the last day of pride. So I need to make sure people know that this is unacceptable. What happened in Okotoks? Uh, the pride crosswalk was first painted in Okotoks. Uh, it would be June, pride month, June uh, 2021. So two years ago, it was first painted. At that time, it was it was a great symbol to our community because if you go back to 2008, 2009, when I moved to Okotoks, I wasn't accepted at first. Like there were restaurants I wasn't allowed to eat at in Okotoks. There were, when I was, uh, as, when I first started as a stylist in Okotoks, there were clients that would uh, take their kids and make sure to get them out as fast as they could. And they made claims that, uh, that I was a pedophile because I was just, because they suspected I was a gay man. There is no, I, I, it's, I'm pretty obviously gay. So I'm pretty sure that's why. But you fast forward to 2021 and I never thought I would see the day that you would, that we would be painting a crosswalk in Okotoks. I never thought we'd be raising the pride flag. What happened in uh, 20 or 2023, just today uh, with, the, with the vandalism of this pride crosswalk I don't think it's a representation of our community. I don't think, I feel we, we didn't have a pride festival this year just because of um, nothing. It, it, it would just work with uh, logistics with the pride committee, the local pride committee. We didn't have that, but I feel comfortable going to our parade day. We'll be it coming up this Saturday. So it'll be, I know it's a little bit late because uh, you guys are uh, airing this on the 30th, but I feel comfortable being there with my partner holding their hand. When something like this happens, when somebody vandalizes this, we just, the town, it, it was pouring rain today, but the town went and washed it off in the pouring rain and we cleaned it up and uh, we're going to pre repaint it when it when it quits raining and we move on. I don't, I don't even acknowledge this behavior anymore because it's not our community. This is not how Okotoks feels. Uh, whoever did this, uh, I don't even know if it was an attack on the 2S LGBTQ plus community. I, because we have, a, like all communities, we have a, a heightened amount of vandalism lately. We, we've seen it with other things in the last week. So I don't know if it's, they never left us a letter. So in my, from my understanding, this was just another random act of vandalism and I don't take it personally. And this is not, whoever did this 
does not represent our community. When I was down in Okotoks, when uh, yourself and Councillor Swenzied, sorry, I'm going to pronounce her name wrong, Rachel, uh, 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 gave us a tour. My husband and I got a tour from yourself and uh, Rachel, and we felt accepted. We didn't feel like we would need it to be run out of town. And I know from someone who's lived in small town in Alberta, it is sometimes challenging to be openly LGBTQ plus in our community. Uh, in our province, but I am so happy that you've said what you've just said, that it doesn't reflect what Okotoks is, because when I saw it, I was like, is this just another attack on our community? But it doesn't sound like that. No, I don't. I don't think so at all. I think it's it's just one or two people that are, I don't think they, and when they do this kind of uh, vandalism, I don't even know they realize what, what, they're doing like I don't I don't think that or I want to believe that they don't realize the effect that they're having especially on people that are I'm not even gonna focus on youth but people are who are unsure whether they should come out or not or like if this is a safe community because I I truly believe that I or I want to believe that people feel safe coming out in our community if they want to come out do you believe do you believe that you're and I, I hate yet again you seem like a humble person and I, I don't want to expand your ego but do you feel like you need to be open with who you are in your community and even in, in Alberta because there are a few openly gay counselors in our province if like a handful that I can count on in my hand do you feel like you need to stand up and be heard when uh people are attacking our community as a counselor as someone of influence in the province i know this conversation has gone completely off the rails but i i i wanted to have you on in the month of june because i wanted to have this conversation because i feel and i am i'm gonna hold you up on the pedestal here oliver but you're a role model for kids who are closet it right now who need to have people in power in government to say they're the reason he's the reason she's the reason i can be open and i can achieve my dreams yeah <laughs> oh my god there's so much to unpack from that uh yeah i you know if we go back to the crosswalk, I, I, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more and then I'll get into that other part piece. But uh, when it first got painted, I did have a few clients that point out, they're like, well, why do you people need that? And this is coming from clients that I've done for 10 years. So it's interesting how they phrase it. And, and they are just, they might be just like, they just had a way of thinking for so long. So they, I did get asked, how, why do you people need that? I'm like, well, uh, I'm like, Mary, I'm sorry, but like this, I, I, th it's good for our community. We don't need this, but it's, it goes to show, cause right now there are kids at home or even adults, like young adults that are at home and they don't know whether or not, uh, like their families might not accept them now, but they, I'm sure they will over time, their families will come around, but this shows to, goes to show there's people in their community like them that uh, or their community as a whole or the organization supports them. So I think that's, it's an important message. And when I got elected, I don't feel that I need to, I, during my campaign, well, I had a website and I did not hide the fact that I have a partner. I wrote that in the little blurb where it shows all your kind of what your ideas are for the town. And then in the bottom it says, oh, Oliver likes to uh, walk his dogs with his partner, Evan and a picture of us like canoeing on the lake. So oh. I don't hide the fact that that I am a gay man, but I also didn't want that to be what, who I, it, does, it doesn't make me up who I am. Like I want- You're a town there, counselor, you're not a gay town counselor is what you're saying. Yes, exactly. And I want, I think it's inspiring to um, just anybody that is gay, that's in the closet, that is wondering it, yes, it, sitting in this role it's good but I want them to see that I my sexuality doesn't really matter it's like this is it's just we want to be accepted I want them to feel accepted and that you don't have to stand out to to get that so I don't as an advocate for 
gosh, I'm going to tell you right now, Councillor Swensey on council, she is a much better advocate for the 2S LGBTQ plus community than I am because I think I advocate differently. I advocate as to show this is like, we're just people. It doesn't matter who you share your bed with. Like, that's it. And does that answer your question? I it does. And I'm going to jump into the next topic here because we could probably spend a good three hours just on this conversation alone. But I want to talk about the role of counselor because you have to look at the town as a whole and look and vote on the best interest of the town. Yes, you will have people come to you and say, I want issue X addressed or issue Y addressed, but you will sometimes have to say no, because at the end of the day, you know, and I know that Okotoks only has a certain amount of money. You can't run deficits. So not everything is going to get accomplished. How do you see yourself balancing the needs of the few against the needs of the many? And yes, I am quoting Star Trek for everyone who sends in their nasty emails about this. Yes, I am quoting Star Trek. How do you balance the needs of the many with the needs of the few, Oliver? I'm going to start off by saying our CAO loves Star Trek. So I <laughs> now I might be able to get her to listen to this podcast <laughs> now that I can tell her that, that you use that quote. Um, I mean, it's I'm I kind of have a cop out here living in Okotoks because walk, everybody that ran all 25 people ran uh, with the campaign that we wanted to bring water to Okotoks. Water is an issue. Uh, to bring water to Okotoks, it's going to be expensive. So the the needs of the many is water right now in Okotoks. So when we have this balancing act of of different things. Um, I'm for the, at least for the first, we have a water solution, kind of we're on track to, to for a water solution um, with the Foothills County and taking some water from the bow and bringing it to Okotoks. It's a little bit bigger than that, but uh, for the, for my first full term, I'm going to be able to, this isn't going to be a challenge for me because I'm always water, it comes first. That's what we're all kind of, where all our bucket is for money. Have you learned the balance of the public life and private life yet? Have you gone to the grocery store and people stop you and say, Councillor Hallmark, can I can I stop you for 10 minutes and have a conversation about this issue that I have? Because I'm assuming there's days that you just want to be Oliver and just go to the grocery store, pick up a carton of milk and come home and just relax. But as the job of the counselor, and you kind of jokingly said it at the beginning of the interview, it's a lot of volunteer hours for little pay. And you're on 24-7 and you don't get downtime unless you're at your house and relaxing in your in your own like four walls so have you learned the balance of the public life versus the private life of a counselor yeah you know we live in a very small town so because of the volunteer work i did before i don't think that i think my popularity is like gone down since getting elected so people don't actually want to talk to me like it, I, oh, I, I, oh I, i'm gonna challenge you on that because when, <laughs> when i was getting a tour with my husband and you were there everyone was saying oh oliver oh oliver and we're like oh this guy's very popular well one lady on the dog path the other day said don't ever talk to me when i said hi to her so i so i'm sure that I, there's some people that don't like me now so but i think that i'm used to it my partner he'll never be used to it but um, again, talking to elected officials all across the province at any conference I go to, it sounds like every partner is the same. They just, they don't care. They like, but uh, so I don't know if they'll ever get used to it. I don't, I'm like, whatever. It's fine. It's good. I, I, I enjoy talking to people. So I, I want to turn to sort of the last big subject here and it's tourism. I like tourism. I like community events. Uh, I've been to Okotoks. I'm coming back in a few weeks because I have friends coming from Halifax. And uh, from what I understand, you have a great escape room. But what are some of the events that are coming up in Okotoks? And what are some of the tourist destinations that tourists should be stopping in to see? Okay, so for tourism, and I and I hate this because I'm going to call out some of the businesses in town, and I and I don't mean that against others, but we have some cool, like we have a 2D bakery on Elma Street. We didn't make it when you came to visit, but it's all two dimensional. Uh, people from all over Western Canada came when it first opened, and still they're lined up on a Sunday down because everything's two dimensional when you go in. So that's 94. Take the cake. Hubtown Brewery, they also, they don't just have beer, they have like, they have a great food truck, great patio, and uh, they have uh, mocktails. So for people that don't drink, they can go there and 
Uh, it's a, it's like their patios are awesome. The weekend they've got live entertainment. So, and then that escape room, the arcade, really great. Like I haven't made it there, but I've heard it's awesome. Like I just, I just haven't had time to get there yet. Um, we also have a, a handful of festivals this summer. So I know this airs a little bit late, but I'm going to say we got the Okotoks Parade this Saturday, June 17th. We got Busker Fest and an Artisan Market on June 24th. We got the Taste of Okotoks and Artisan Market on um, July 22nd. Uh, another big one is the Okotoks Show and Shine Car Show. It's all downtown on August 20th. Uh, we have a barbecue showdown in Artisan Market on August 26th. And then the big one that you can see Marathorn singing Jingle Bells, and I usually sing backup, the council sings backup, is Light Up Okotoks, November 17th. Oh, and we're also doing this, we're host, Okotoks is also hosting the summer games, um, July 20th to 23rd, and we are looking for volunteers. We are still short, <laughs> I think well over 300 volunteers is what I read today, but I, that might even be light. We might need even more than that. So if anybody's listening to this on June 30th, the summer games are still 20 days away. So you guys should come out, come to Okotoks and volunteer because it would really make the kids happy. Um, we will put links to the volunteer pages that I'm assuming the Summer Games has uh, in the show notes. So anyone who wants to scroll down and check that out. I want to talk a little bit about a uh, recent development in Okotoks when it comes to some of these events. Okotoks is going through an entertainment district, uh, which is just put, uh, I think they're doing a trial run, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Councillor. But has it been a success with everything that's going on? You are wrong. Uh, it came to what? GPC. I'm sorry. The, this, has come, this came to our governance and priorities uh, meeting and it left there to come to council. And we kind of, and then we as council wanted to hear from the community. We wanted to, to hear the public participation. So we had three tiers of that. We did a, a thing at the RF Dev, did something at the, the trade show in the spring and they asked anybody that came to the trade show what they thought of an entertainment district. It was received, I think, at close to 90 eight percent i might be high on that number but it was really high for people in support of an entertainment district keeping in mind these people are walking in a trade show have no idea what it is then we did a community-wide survey and it came back at 55 percent in support of the entertainment district and uh this is a community as a whole and then what i looked at because i do run i contract my business out of a salon downtown okotoks what i looked at as a counselor the closest was the downtown businesses had their own survey. And this was uh, 36 businesses filled it out and 33 said that they really didn't want an entertainment district. I should also speak to what an entertainment district is. Entertainment district um, would be open alcohol in a certain portion of town. And so they looked at doing it for our downtown. And what we heard from our downtown businesses in the end was that we didn't, how I looked at it, 33 out of 36 that filled out the survey said they didn't want it. So council at second reading of this bill, I used, because I made them up, killed it, which is not really a political term. We killed the bill. So we do, will not be having an entertainment district or the pilot okay. or anything. I, I so hadn't heard good. anything about it. So that's why I wanted to clarify because I, I, I thought it was a good idea, but I, I'm just one person from Calgary who doesn't know what people want in Okotoks. So that's why I bring people you on like you. You would have been the 98% at the trade show that stuck the sticker there because we had no idea where those people were from. They were just visiting Okotoks for the trade show. So you could have stuck your sticker on that 98%. Um, I want to talk about yourself, though, in the community of Okotoks. Where do you go to decompress after a long day of council meetings, after a long day of work, after a long day of walking on the trails and someone tells you, I don't want to talk to you anymore? Where do you go to decompress and recenter yourself? Well, it's funny you say the trails because I am, uh, I love walking. I usually walk my dogs with my partner on the trails, usually by the river or we've got a pond kind of near our house. Okotoks has 94 kilometers of interconnected pathway system. So a lot of people that um, when, when asked, like when we did our last household survey, this was a, this is a huge draw. This is why a lot of people move here is because of our interconnected pathway system. So I spend a lot of time with my partner and my dogs walking on the trails. Like that would be something how I decompress or anything with friends. I'm like, I am not the type that if I'm sitting alone, I'm reading a book or like hanging out in my backyard. But uh, I, when I'm out, I like to be out with friends or wherever that is. It doesn't matter. I like the trails though. I think the trail system is. 
uh, I'll have to check that out when I'm down there in a few weeks with my friends from Halifax. So I want to end on this question. And this is the most important question. This is the million dollar question for you. And as you're trying to rack your brain of what that question is, I'm going to ask the question. And that is, Oliver, what makes Okotok such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? I'm going to um, not give you the bullshit answer that everybody says the people, because this answer drives me crazy. It's such a cop out. Every municipality has people and then of course they make it. So I re- I've listened to your podcast once or twice and this is always that answer it drives me crazy because so I have, I've <laughs> prepared this one. I think that something that makes Okotok stand out is our alternative modes. We have uh, so many alternate alternatives for transportation for around Okotoks. You don't, a family doesn't really need to have multiple cars here because we have the 94 kilometers of interconnected pathway system. We have uh, five buses that run door to door transit. So we have door to door transit in Okotoks. We have the bird scooter system uh, or a program with 128 scooters and with the pathway you can get anywhere. So something that makes Okotoks stand out because a lot of communities I don't feel have that that way to get around so so yes and the people of course are wonderful they obviously voted me in so <laughs> but don't <bump. laughs> not gonna say it not gonna say it <laughs> because, uh, you, you you've said two things that people often say on the show when i ever ask them that question they always say it's the trail system and it's the people so you've hit two of my things that i hear all the time on this show <laughs> But I agree that when I when I was in Okotoks and I went into some of the businesses before while we were waiting for you and uh, Councillor Swenseed to show up to give give us the mini tour, yeah, you, you have some very friendly businesses in your community, and I give them credit because we walked in, they like treated us like we were like like hadn't seen us in like two years, and we didn't know who these people were, but they were so uh enthusiastic that we walked into their business and i'm not sure if that was just blowing smoke or if it was sincere but it felt sincere to us and i i I, i'm looking forward to seeing those trails in a few weeks counselor i want to thank you so much i want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sitting down and doing this i know you said you were a little nervous but you did amazing um and i appreciate you taking time out of your day to chat with me about yourself the town of Okotoks, and of course, tourism. No problem. Thank you for having me on. We want to take a moment and thank you, the listeners, for tuning in for another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Uh, We want to remind also everyone that tomorrow is Canada Day in this great country of Canada. Until Monday, we will be back with another great episode. Until then, just keep talking.